This week, NASA's $10 billion space telescope reached a magical balance point in space, and it's now getting ready to look back in time to 13.7 billion years ago. Here are the details. The BBC reports that the world's most powerful space telescope has reached the point from where it will observe the stars and planets in distant solar systems. The $10 billion spacecraft reached Earth's Lagrange Point 2 on Monday, January 24th. This position is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth and is one of five positions in space around Earth where gravitational forces and the orbital motion of a body like the space telescope balance each other. Therefore, these points can be used by a spacecraft to stay in the same position relative to Earth without drifting closer or farther away. Lagrange Point 2 is located 1.5 million kilometers directly behind the Earth as viewed from the Sun. When the space telescope arrived at this parking spot on Monday, it fired its thrusters for nearly five minutes to stop moving away from Earth. It will take scientists until May to fully calibrate the device's giant mirrors, and the first images are expected in June. Astronomers say the telescope will be able to look back in time 13.7 billion years to when the first galaxies were forming. NASA scientists say that before the $10 billion observatory can start processing images in June, its mirrors must still be aligned, its infrared detectors must be cooled, and its scientific instruments must be calibrated. The James Webb Space Telescope is finally ready to launch after NASA spent billions of dollars to fix the design of its giant sun shield's deployment mechanism. Now everyone's holding fingers crossed that the $10 billion US dollar telescope won't become the most expensive dud ever. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that NASA will finally launch the $10 billion James Webb Telescope on December 18th. This will be the largest, most powerful, and most complex telescope ever placed in space. After many years of postponements, the telescope is now finally cleared for takeoff on a European space agency Ariane rocket from Kourou in French Guiana. Once in space, the telescope will take around a month to get to its final position, where it will orbit the Sun at around 1.5 kilometers from Earth. The launch of this very expensive telescope had been postponed quite a few times. Work on it began back in 1996, and the plan was to launch it in 2007. The original price estimate was only $500 million, which is only 5% of the current price tag of $10 billion. The telescope will feature a 6.5-meter mirror and a sun shield that will unfurl to the size of a tennis court once in space. This massive sun shield has to fit into a tiny cargo bay, and solving the engineering problems of getting such a huge surface to unfurl successfully caused long delays and a ballooning budget. Scientists are now hoping that the sun shield will be able to unfurl perfectly when it is 1.5 million kilometers from Earth. Otherwise, the $10 billion James Webb Telescope might become the most expensive oopsie in history. NASA plans to launch its massive new SLS rocket and Orion crew vehicle toward the moon later this year. The unmanned mission would test the system and pave the way for a manned mission to the moon in 2023. SLS is short for Space Launch System, and because the moon is a thousand times farther away from Earth than the International Space Station, it needs to be much, much bigger than the other rockets. Reuters reports that NASA plans to launch its massive new SLS rocket for an unmanned test mission around the moon later this year. The first version of the SLS will tower 23 stories above the launch pad. Its core stage houses two large storage tanks, one for liquid hydrogen and another for the liquid oxygen that makes the hydrogen burn. These liquids are fed into the engine chambers and ignited with a spark, where the chemical reaction produces vast amounts of energy and steam. The core stage has four RS-25 engines the same ones that powered the space shuttle. The steam exits the engine nozzles at high speed, generating enough thrust to push the giant into space. Two solid rocket boosters give the rocket extra power to escape gravity's clutches. These twin boosters stand more than 17 stories tall and burn six tons of solid propellant each second. They provide 75% of total thrust during the first two minutes of flight. Once in orbit, the crew capsule will detach from the SLS and use its space engine to get all the way to the moon. The SLS would be the most powerful rocket ever when it powers into space this year, generating 8.8 .8 million pounds of thrust during launch, 15% more than the Saturn V rocket that took the first humans to the moon in 1969. However, the super-heavy rocket that SpaceX is building for its Starship spaceship would almost double that, producing as much as 16 million pounds of thrust. SpaceX has said it plans to test launch its Starship on top of its super-heavy rocket before the end of July. It will be interesting to see which system launches first without blowing up. 
In April, NASA awarded a $2.9 billion contract to Elon Musk to build the new moon mission's human landing system, rejecting a much more expensive bid from Jeff Bezos' company, Blue Origin. However, Bezos is now making an extraordinary offer to try to win the contract after already losing it. Here are the details. BBC reports that Jeff Bezos is offering NASA a discount of more than $2 billion for the agency to give his space company a lucrative human lunar landing system contract that is rival Elon Musk's SpaceX won in April this year. In Bezos' original proposal for the lunar landing system, his Blue Origin company would team up with other companies to build three vehicles called Elements. These three elements would be launched separately and link up in Earth orbit. This is where the transfer element would be used to transport the whole package to the moon. Once in position over the moon, the two other elements would detach, using the descent element's thrusters to slow them down so they could fall to the moon's surface. The descent element would also protect the astronaut carrying ascent element from flying rocks, although this would mean that the astronauts would have to climb down a long ladder to get to the surface. Once it's time to return, the ascent element would fire its own rockets to blast back into moon orbit, where it would meet up again with the transfer element. The transfer element would then take the astronauts and their ascent element back to Earth. Once in Earth orbit, the astronauts would ditch the transfer element and try not to burn up during the dangerous re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. After re-entry, the ascent element would deploy large parachutes to land on Earth's surface. In other words, the three elements of Bezos' system would work very much the same as NASA's first mission to the moon back in 1969. NASA's Perseverance rover is en route to the edge of a designated flight zone in Mars' Jezero crater, where the Ingenuity Mars helicopter will attempt its maiden flight in early April. The $85 million helicopter is currently connected to the bottom of the rover. When it arrives at the drop-off point, the helicopter will be rotated and released a few centimeters above the Martian surface. After lowering Ingenuity to the ground, Perseverance will back up to a safe distance of around 100 meters away. The helicopter will then undergo a series of tests to ensure it can keep warm autonomously through the intensely cold Martian nights, charge autonomously using its solar panel, communicate with the rover and flight operators on Earth, and spin up its rotor blades. Ingenuity's first flight test will see the helicopter lift off to an altitude of 3 meters above the ground and hover for about 20 to 30 seconds. If successful, this will be the first powered flight on another planet, and the first of up to five autonomous flights in 30 Martian days. Further tests will see the helicopter fly incrementally farther and higher to an altitude of 5 meters. NASA created a fictional asteroid and set it on course to hit Earth six months after being discovered by humanity's early warning systems. Earth's scientists worked together to stop the doomsday rock from hitting Earth, and this is what happened. NASA reports that it recently hosted a test to see if Earth's best scientists could stop an asteroid from hitting the planet. In the scenario, a fictitious asteroid was detected six months before it would hit Earth. The participants in the simulation considered various missions in which spacecraft could try to destroy the asteroid or deflect it off its path. Most options to deflect an asteroid, such as deflection via a high-energy impact or a gravity tractor or an ion beam shepherd, work by only slightly nudging the targeted space rock. If performed far enough in advance, that small nudge builds up to become a large shift in position by the time the asteroid gets near Earth, but participants concluded that such missions wouldn't be able to get off the ground in the short amount of time before impact. However, they found that using a rocket to deliver a nuclear explosion on or next to the asteroid could save the Earth. Unfortunately, a nuclear bomb would only be able to make a difference if the asteroid was relatively small compared to the giants that had hit Earth in the past. Currently, Earth's early warning system does inspire confidence. Comet Neowise, a 4.8 kilometer wide chunk of space ice, passed within 64 million kilometers of Earth in July. Nobody knew this comet existed until a NASA space telescope discovered it approaching only four months earlier. In 2013, a meteor about 20 meters in diameter entered Earth's atmosphere without warning. It exploded over Chelyabinsk, Russia, creating a shockwave that broke windows and damaged buildings across the region. More than 1,400 people were injured. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.